Brethren, a very warm welcome to you all and thank you for joining us today. I can see we've got a wonderful 287 on board at the moment, uh, which is just fantastic. Um, as usual, I'm going to start with some boring housekeeping for you all. Um, the meeting is being recorded and will be posted onto our YouTube page. Therefore, any of you who do not wish to be seen, please feel free to turn your videos off now. To avoid any disruptions during the talk, if you could also please manage your microphones are kept on mute throughout, that would be great. There will be an open Q&A session after the talk, and if you'd like to ask a question, please use the hand up icon, which can be found in the participants section um, or participants tab on Zoom and wait for your name to be called out. Uh, you may then unmute yourself, ask your question, but then please do not forget to put yourself on mute again. Brethren, as I alluded to last week, if you could please to give everyone a chance to, to ask their question, if you could just stick to questions and not make any statements, um, we'll really appreciate that. We're happy to keep the session going on longer after I've concluded the, um, the session um, for any sort of general discussions that you may want to have on subject matter. Once again, we are going to give giving away our two of our bespoke Freemasons Without Borders mugs. Really easy, simple question for you today. So I expect many of you to get this right. How many temples are there in Mark Mason's Hall, England? If you could answer, put your answers in the chat section and the first two winners will be announced at the end of the, the talk. Brethren, without further ado, it is now my pleasure to introduce you to our next speaker, most worthy Supreme Magus, Anthony William Llewellyn, or Tony, as he's more affectionately known. Tony is a retired police officer he was married, he's been married for 50 years and he has a BA in Open University. Lives in Yorkshire, which as we've alluded to before, is the closest you're gonna to get to God without seeing him. Um, Tony's been a craft mason since 1978 um, and has been in chapter since 1980. He has held many, many grand, or has, or he does hold many grand ranks in all of the orders that he's part of, um, which are pretty much all of them, brethren. If I went here to list them all, I'd be here all night. Um, so without further ado, brethren, I give you Supreme Agus, Tony, Anthony, William, Llewellyn. Good evening, brethren and ladies, or should I say fratres and sorores, as we would say in the SRIA. Welcome to this talk on the SRIA. Uh, this is a general talk on various aspects of the society. I'm fully aware that there are many points within this talk which are subject of debate and contention, even amongst my own fratres, but wish to give a general outline for the elucidation of all Freemasons. It's wonderful to see so many people from all around the world. We do in the SRIA have colleges in America, in Australia, Canada, and in France, Germany, and the Netherlands. But it's wonderful to see people from South Africa because many, many years ago, we did have a college in South Africa, but that unfortunately disappeared. Please forgive any minor omissions or errors I might make. And to correct some of those, I have got John Wicks, the senior substitute Magus, Paul Mycock, the junior substitute Magus for Europe, and Stephen Priestley, the general secretary, to assist me if I go wrong with any answers and the later questions. Why is it called the SRIA? The Societas Rosicruciana in Anglia, Anglia being the Latin name of course for England, is the oldest independent society of Rosicrucian Freemasons in the world. And when I say Freemasons there, I mean that Freemasons, uh, Freemasonry is a criteria for membership. You have to be a Freemason to be a member, and that Freemasonry, you have to be a member of a lodge, which is recognised by United Grand Lodge of England. It assists Freemasons to extend their researches into the hidden mysteries of nature and science. Based at its headquarters in Stanfield Hall, Hampstead, North London, it spreads, as I say, throughout the world, having some 23 provinces, 90 colleges, and excellent working relations with its daughter constitutions. I'll just share a screen. When I, when I get there.
with its, with its other constitutions. Um, our daughter constitution is the SRIS in Scotland. And on this picture you see there, hopefully, is the, at that time, he was the um, Supreme Magus elect of the SRIS, Ian Robertson, and he is now in charge of the SRIS in Scotland. It's based primarily in Edinburgh. To my left on that picture is William H. Coombe II, who was the Supreme Magus of the Societas Rosicruciana in Civitatibus Federus, which is the American version. And on the far side is jo Joachim Kualo, <coughs> who is the Supreme Magus of the Societas Rosicruciana in Lusitania, which covers Portugal and Italy. This was the occasion of my installation a Supreme Magus, which occurred in May 2019. 2019 was a momentous year for the societies in that the, I was installed as a Supreme Magus for England, Ian was for Scotland, and Jeff Nelson was installed as the new Supreme Magus for the SRICF. The SRIA have an extensive library at our headquarters, <coughs> of many rare esoteric books and papers, some of which due to their value are housed within the UGLI library to facilitate access by researchers. The society was founded originally by Robert Wentworth Little in 1865. This is a, a very old photograph and as you can see he was in many many different orders. Little worked in the offices of Grand Lodge and was also responsible for bringing the Red Cross of Constantine back in 1865. The Rosicrucian Society of England, or Brethren of the Rosy Cross, <coughs> as they were originally named, held their first meeting on the 1st of June 1867 at the now sadly demolished George Hotel, Aldermanbury, London. And the full history of the Society is currently being updated and will be available in 2021. Our previous history was made up only to 2003. As I say, the society is not part of Freemasonry, but shares much in common with it. The order states that Rosicrucianism is concerned with encouraging the fellowship of man and with comprehending the true nature and purpose of his place in creation. So what are the objects and philosophy of the SRIA? <clears throat> The objects of the society are the diffusion of light and the advancement of science. According to the order, the philosophy of Rosicrucian fraternity is founded on the aspirations of its legendary founder, Christian Rosenkreutz, a German of noble birth and monastic education, who having sojourned to the East in search of enlightenment, sought to bring the ancient knowledge he had gained back to the West. After encountering resistance and ridicule throughout Europe, he retired to Germany, where he founded the Fraternity of the Rosy Cross. The Rosicrucians came to light 120 years after their legendary founder's death at the turn of the 17th century. This was a time of momentous change in um, events within Europe, and there was a feeling then that there was something momentous going to happen. Through the publication of the two manifestos, the Pharma Fraternitatis and the Confessio Fraternitatis, which are the fame and confession of the fraternity, which were published in Germany in 1614-15. This is the frontispiece of the Pharma. These invited all learned of Europe to join them in an educational, moral and scientific reformation of society. These two tracts were followed by The Chemical Wedding, an allegorical work completing the esoteric trilogy. The original texts were translated into English in 1652 by Thomas Vaughan, and this was the main source for English students. This was written in the style of the day, and a little like the originals, it's very hard for modern students to easily interpret. Several model translations have been done which help our understanding one by Stephen Markham, which was done recently, and a previous one on the Rosicrucian Trilogy. These are written in modern English and are much easier to understand. In common with Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism is concerned with encouraging the fellowship of man and with comprehending the true nature and purpose of his place in creation. 
Rosicrucians are Christians, rose and cross, which are standard phases for Christ. To join this society, you must profess the Trinitarian Christian faith, though there are no creeds or doctrines specified in our ordinances. The aim of the society is to afford mutual aid and encouragement in working out the great problems of life and in discovering the secrets of nature. To facilitate the study of the system of philosophy founded upon the Kabbalah and the doctrines of Hermes Trismegistus, which was inculcated by the original Rosicrucian texts, and to investigate the meaning and symbolism of all that now remains of the wisdom, art and literature of the ancient world. The spiritual journey of understanding one's relationship with the Creator is peculiarly unique and individual, but it need not be a lonely one. Indeed, it may be necessary that one be guided or encouraged by an adept or some other person who has traversed and contemplated a similar path. The original brethren of the Rose and Cross invited the learned of Europe to join them in a general reformation of learning and society. The Societas Rosicruciana in Angli now invites all Master Masons seeking further enlightenment to join the society and participate in the objects of its fraternal assembly. So what is the structure of our Societas Rosicruciana Angliae? The society is led by myself, a Supreme Magus, who is elected each year at the High Council. He is supported by a senior substitute magus, junior substitute magi responsible for geographical areas of the world, and the High Council, as well as his General Purposes Committee. The society is governed by the Supreme Magus, the High Council, and this committee. The committee has, the off has officers as listed in the next slide. This is the Supreme Magus, as I mentioned, the Secretary General, the Deputy Secretary General, Recorder General, Deputy Recorder General, and the full list of officers as you go through them there. It's quite a long list, and this is uh, fairly typical of the, the way that most Masonic organizations work. Particularly, we have a Librarian General and a Deputy Librarian General, um, and then a Director of Technology which I'll mention a little bit later. The society is divided into provinces, each one governed by a chief adept and his deputy known as the suffragan. Depend upon the size and geography of the province, they may have several different colleges, a number of different colleges, unlike the American system, which primarily has one chief adept for a particular state, although there are some states that do have more than one college. The provinces are governed by a chief adept and each has a deputy known as a suffragan, as I mentioned. And they appoint or can appoint provincial officers, which are primarily uh, a secretary, a treasurer, a director of studies uh, and, uh, a, and um, a director of, of studies overall, uh, as well as a director of ceremonies. The basic unit of the society is called a college, which is normally housed in Masonic premises, certainly in England, with a majority of colleges meeting on Saturday. And usually they have about three meetings per year. Each college is governed by a celebrant, an exponent, a chaplain, a secretary, a treasurer, a director of ceremonies, and then we have four ancients. Now the picture behind me shows the annual meeting of Lisbon, the Societas Rosicruciana in Lusitania, when I attended there in September last year. And the banners behind are emblems of the original sort of seven ancients which were involved in some of the original ceremonies. The society is organized in three orders, having nine grades in total, each having its own appropriate ritual and lectures. These are loosely based on the allegorical Pharma Fraternitatis published in 1614 and the grades of the German Golden and Rosicrucian order. Our members are called Frater, which is Latin for brother, 
or fratres, which is the plural. And each member adopts a Latin motto as his name in the society, as a throwback to the anonymity of the original members. Members aspire to go through um, the nine grades, each having its own colourful, very impressive ritual ceremony. The grids are broken into three distinct orders. In the first order, from the first to the fourth degree, which are the Zelata, Practicus, Theoricus, and Philosophus, the Frater is a student and is led through the ceremonies and guided in his studies. The only regalia is a jewel, which is suspended from a yellow ribbon. In America, the colors are slightly different. The jewel has, uh, is a, a lozenge, a rhombus on a white shield with a red cross. And there are a total of 72 rungs on that cross. Obviously alluding to a tetragrammaton and, uh, and the name of God. In the center is a small pentagram and minutely around there is a very small logo. In the second order, from the fifth to the seventh degree, which are Adeptus Minor, Adeptus Maior, and Adeptus Exemptus, they become teachers and become responsible for assisting the fratres in the first order. The regalia is this jewel, worn from a green ribbon on this occasion, although again it is slightly different in America. You can also insert a, a numeral onto the ribbon to show which actual grid that you are in. There are time restrictions on the conferment of the grids, with four years being the limit to go from the first to the fourth degree. And then again, in the second order, there are restrictions for the next three grades. A frata must become a seventh degree to become celebrant or master of his college. The normal administrative business of the college is conducted after a prayer. And then a mystic circle is opened where the ritual ceremonies are performed for closing this mystic circle and then returning to any other college business. Papers on a very wide range of esoteric thought are given either in the college or afterwards before a festive board. All fratres to assist their learning are encouraged to prepare papers and exchange ideas in order to pursue their personal spiritual development. The third order from the eighth to the ninth degree, which is Magister and Magus, is by authority of the Supreme Magus and is the ruling order of the society and comprises the membership of the High Council. The eighth grade ceremony is conducted by the Supreme Magus or in a commission by another eighth or ninth grade. And there are only a small number of eighth or ninth fratres. The ninth grade is conducted by the Supreme Magus or again exceptionally on a commission by another ninth grade. Our Supreme Magus Emeritus, John Paternoster, who was on this meeting this evening, during his term 13 years as Supreme Magus, prepared a wonderful study guide to the Kabbalah for use by individual fratres or colleges. He also revised and prepared the rituals for all of the grades with notes of guidance on each grade. The society holds an annual competition for the best paper produced by a frater and, produce, and presents a companion of Christian Rosenkreutz jewel to the winner. His paper is normally given at High Council meeting the following year. The quality of these papers is extremely high and the papers from 2018 to 2016 have recently been published in, in a book 
the companions of Christian Rosenkreutz. This complaint contains a, a very good number of papers on a very wide range of subjects. And anybody who uh, wants to have a look at this, it, it will really um, understand the broad width that uh, is encouraged within, free, within the society. There is a further order called the Order of Christian Rosenkreutz for fratres who have given outstanding service to the society. This is in similar manner to many of the other orders and societies which have um, in, rewarded people who have developed or done great service. On a personal invitation of the Supreme Magus, ninth grade fratres may be admitted to a further order, the order of the Adept of Christian Rosenkreutz. And this is the insignia of that particular order. The longest serving Supreme Magus of the society was one William Wynne Westcott in 1892 to 1925. And in this photograph, you see him wearing the collar and jewel, carrying the battle, which I am now privileged to wear and carry. The jewel was originally presented to William Woodman, the second Supreme Magus, for his work over the eight years as Secretary General of the Society. Those of an esoteric bent will remember that Westcott, Woodman and McGregor Mathers were responsible for the creation of the Golden Dawn in 1888. Not surprisingly, due to Little's involvement in the craft and other orders, since the establishment of the society in 1867, we have had excellent relations with the United Grand Lodge of England, Mark Mason's Hall, and all of the ad orders administered by them and many other sovereign orders. Due to the current pandemic, the High Council, General Purposes Committee, provincial and college meetings have been impossible. Many have continued with Zoom business meetings, but been unable to perform our wonderful ritual ceremonies. As the essence of our work is the diffusion of light, I am particularly grateful to Paul Mycock and the Director General of Studies, Matt Fletcher and his team, who have remodeled our website to allow fratres and others to access vast, vast tracts of papers and information. Andy Sables runs a virtual college study circle sending out papers, and the long-standing Metropolitan Study Group has recently utilised Zoom to large numbers of seekers after truth. The website is, is almost um, being re, re completed and redone and will be uh, put online very shortly. As we approach the 25th of December, it behoves us to remember the true spirit of Christmas, the feeling of hope, goodwill, and happiness, which strikes into all mankind at this time of the year, has sadly been hijacked by cynical materialistic commercial enterprises, which is all the more reason for those of us who look forward to the anniversary of the birth of that bright morning star, whose rising brings peace and salvation to the faithful and obedient of the human race, that we should celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world, the Lux Mundi, and may some of that light spread throughout the world in a happier and healthier new year. Fratres and Sororis, I thank you for listening to this brief explanation. And God bless all of you and have a Merry Christmas. I thank you. Tony, thank you ever so much for that. I know it's uh, not the easiest when you're uh, coming and presenting on Zoom. We have got some uh, hands raised. If you could, uh, if I could ask you to stop sharing your screen, Tony, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Well, right, we'll go straight to the questions. Um, first one up, Brother Philippe. Hi, Philippe. Hello, Amit, thank you. Supreme Magus, uh, thank you very much for this uh, lecture. My question is about uh, the fact that there are many um, mentions of Rosicrucians within different Masonic and even non-Masonic orders. So in your words, what would be the unique feature or that speciality that we have in SRIA when compared, for instance, to 
Proscroa or even non-Masonic systems such as AMORC, which can be seen too many of them uh, online. Thank you. Yes, I, I believe that AMORC is primarily, um, you, you, it costs a lot of money to be an AMORC um, and that you pay for the different grades and different um, mm. uh, papers and things that go on. Um, this, this SRIA is, is primarily uh, Masons um, and you have to be a Mason to, to join the society. That, that's the, that the basic uh, criterion for difference between ourselves and other execution bodies, of which there are many, many bodies, and they're all doing similar sort of work. But ours is the only one, I believe, that, that has specifically Masonic connections amongst the, the four main bodies that we have in the world. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Philippe. Next, can we go to Brother Karak, please? Hi, Karak. Hi, uh, uh, brothers and Grand Magus. Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your very busy day, I'm sure, to uh, uh, take this talk with us. Um, I I'm a, a newly um, raised brother, although I've studied um, uh, the mysteries for quite a while. Uh, I'm interested in the possibility of joining the Society Rosa Cruciana um, <laughs> once I'm a uh, once I'm able to, my curiosity is how does one join? My understanding is it's only by invitation. Um, I don't know if there's any American uh, friends on, but uh, they, they do have a, um, a slightly different system to, to in England. In England, you can apply and, and uh, join on, on a, a general sort of basis. In America, you would need to find someone who is uh, a member um, and, and receive an invitation from them, unfortunately. Um, I'm sure that our Secretary General can put you in touch with the Secretary General for America um, at some stage, and uh, you can maybe pursue that with him. Although, like many um, organizations in America, I understand that if somebody asks uh, to join, uh, then they don't always get in, um, which is, uh, sad to some extent because you, I think we should be open um, and ad admit genuine seekers uh, throughout the world. Thank you, Karak. If you need any assistance, please just let us know. I understand that uh, Jeff Nelson, uh, the Supreme Megas for SRICF, is actually online. Jeff, would you like to uh, answer that question? Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, first of all, congratulations on a uh, on a great uh, presentation uh, this evening. Uh, yes, you are correct. In, in the United States, the SRICF, the Societas Rosicruciana in Civitatibus Federatus, uh, is an invitational uh, body. Uh, some call again with any invitational uh, body. Uh, I take the uh, position and encourage, uh, you know, people that are seeking uh, membership or an invitation. Uh, I, I, we, we don't strictly, uh, again, you know, if you ask for something, it must be denied. We, we really, uh, I discourage that because if it, sometimes if you don't ask, how, how, how do you ever gain admission or, or gain enlightenment? You, you have to seek uh, enlightenment, but, but you are correct. It is an invitational body. Uh, so you just kind of have to uh, make inquiries, uh, you know, uh, express an interest uh, in, in what uh, Rosicrucianism is and, and what its precepts are. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, Rosicrucianism isn't for everyone and, and not everyone is interested in it, this aspect uh, of study, but, uh, but it is uh, invitational. Does, does that uh, help you out answer the question? It does. Um, my curiosity is if we feel called, shouldn't we be able to find a mentor or something within our valley? And the follow up is, is it only through the York Rite in America or is it also through the Scottish Rite as well? Uh, as, as Tony uh, mentioned, the, the only uh, prerequisite or requirement is that you be a Christian uh, Freemason. As, has no connection with any of the rites, Scottish Rite, York Rite, any of the other appendant or concorded bodies, uh, shrine, and any of those, the only requirement is that you are a, a Freemason uh, and a, a Christian. 
Supreme Mega Jeffrey, thank you. It's an honor to have you on board with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Um, brother, can we go to Taleb, please? Hi, Brother Taleb. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I think uh, for Rosy Christian, you, for the society of Rosy Christian, it's just. Taleb, if you can hear us, you for, uh, I think, sorry, uh, if I can interrupt you there, you've got pretty yeah. poor connection. Um, can we come back to you? Okay. Thank you. Next, if we could go to Archie Grover, please. Hi, Archie. You'll have to unmute yourself, Archie. You'll have to take yourself off mute. You're muted. There we go. Yes. Uh, good morning. I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and I'm a member of Locker and Lodge number 151 in Rocky Mountain House. <coughs> and uh, it's a pleasure for me to be uh, uh, able to sit and listen to this, uh, this lecture that was given. And uh, I uh, certainly have learned a lot. And some of the questions that I was thinking of have been asked. So I will just sit and listen on, and I thank you for very thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to sit and listen. Thank you very kindly. Thank you, Archie. If you have another question, please let us know. I will. Thank you. Next, if we could go to Alan Silvestre in Brazil. Hi, Alan. How are you? Hi, Reid. Nice to see you. Well, good evening. It's a pleasure being here. Good morning. Sir, uh, well, I was wondering about what you said before related to the seven nation. Uh, I've been researching here in Brazil. I belong to Pegasus College and I've been looking for some information related to historic stuff connected and how it evolved with the rituals in Societas Rosicruciana. Could you please share a little bit more of your thoughts related to the seven nations you said before and the four <clears throat> that we use today. And nice to see you too, Sir Jeffrey Nelson. It's a pleasure. The, as I say, the English, um, the S SRIA, we use four um, of the ancients. We represent the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. Uh, but in the original rituals, I understand, there was, was seven mentioned, and in Scotland, there's still a point, so seven ancients. Um, the, the banners, as I say, were, were, um, were introduced by Bill Coon, uh, the Supreme Magus for the SRICF. And I am uncertain myself as to the, the full explanation of them. Uh, there is a school of thought that says they have some connection with the Golden Dawn, of course, which, I, as I mentioned, Westcott, um, Mathers and um, Woodman were all heavily involved with. Um, but I don't know whether Jeff could answer it from, from his side. Um, I know that Bill Coon would probably answer it, but uh, Jeff, have you any um, idea? Uh, uh, no, but I, I, uh, I think uh, we have John Bridegroom uh, on the uh, on the uh, call, and I know yes. that he he has been instrumental in uh, doing the research uh, for those uh, banners and, and providing those banners. Uh, John, do you have anything to uh, add? Um, I know that we, thank you, Supreme Magus. Um, I know that we worked um, kind of hard to find the relationships between the colors and the emblems uh, to uh, to sort of represent all of those aspects for the banners. So I, I don't know <coughs> the picture. I was operating off of what the Supreme Council already had um, as the banners that were there. And I was helping to sort of fine tune and develop them. Um, so as far as the origin of why we have them and, and, and why we use them, I couldn't really speak to. But um, I can say that the emblems that are on the banners correlate with the colors and with the astrological symbols and that sort of thing um, all together so that each one of them really becomes an individual study piece uh, that uh, you could meditate on and, and you know, uh, take in yourself and, and find meaning in. So 
there's a lot there to unpack if you take a look at the banners and you look at all of the different associations and what they mean. So, John, thank you ever so much and welcome. Next, could we go to brother Diego Lozano, please? Hi, Diego. Hello, everyone from Mexico. Um, I, uh, I belong to the Lodge uh, Jalapan, Lodge number 38, under the jurisdiction of the Most Worshipful Your Grand Lodge of Mexico. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I enjoyed a lot this uh, presentation. Um, I was wondering, here in Mexico, we don't have this uh, order. And uh, because of the pandemic, uh, obviously, things are changing a lot. For example, the opportunity of sharing this moment together from different parts of the world. Could it be, I mean, and it's just a suggestion, could it be possible to create circles of a study in which maybe we could learn more about uh, the esoteric aspects of, uh, uh, of your order, of your organization, and explore, you know, possibilities that may eventually show up that, I mean, you never know. It's just a suggestion. We don't have access to this at the moment in Mexico. Why not to explore some possibilities? Well, basically it's a suggestion more than a question. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we have an agreement with our colleagues in the SRICF that um, the Americas, that includes North and South of America, um, are, are under their jurisdiction. And um, I know that there are some in um, Bolivia um, and some in Brazil. Uh, so, Jeff, uh, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'm going to mute myself there. Uh, thank you, uh, Tony. Uh, yes, that that is correct. The the four high councils uh, we have uh, we have an, an, an agreement, and uh, currently the SRICF uh, we have. Uh, uh, colleges in uh, Panama, uh, Bolivia, and uh, Brazil, as well as for uh, a, a historical uh, anomaly in, in Canada as well. We have uh, two colleges in, in Canada. And uh, so uh, 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 now having expressed an interest uh, from Mexico, uh, we can we can certainly uh, explore that, and uh, and I can uh, talk to uh, my connections uh, on on this side of the pond and uh, see where we might uh, go with that. But uh, but uh, thank you for the uh, for the inquiry and uh, and the interest. Again, uh, uh, we're not about uh, numbers, but we are certainly about uh, uh, providing the Rosicrucian experience to those people that. Uh, are interested and would like to uh, explore the uh, mysteries of Rosicrucianism. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Diego. Next, could we go to Brother Daniel O'Connell, please? Hi, Daniel. Hi, and um, good evening, Supreme Magus. Uh, you spoke about the study and esoteric side of Rosicrucianism, but what do you feel is the most important discipline to study within Rosicrucianism? We have Kabbalah, Hermeticism, alchemy, etc. But what do you feel is the thing that our members should really get their teeth stuck into? Well, um, over the last few years, it, it's been pushed pushed uh, a great deal by the uh, our Supreme Magus Emeritus um, to study the Kabbalah. But, but I, I, I don't specifically uh, want people to look at uh, one particular aspect because I think that would put some, some of our frat rays off. I want them to have a very broad spectrum of uh, research and consideration of what's there. Uh, I have myself been trying to push uh, more study back into the pharma, the confessio and the chemical wedding, um, because I, I've felt for many years that I could go around a room and say, who's actually read the pharma all the way through? Who's actually read the confessio all the way through? Who has read the chemical wedding and can make some sense of it? <laughs> And, and, and if I went around a room, I would find a very, very small number who could put their hands up and truthfully say that they did, which is why I mentioned those two books earlier on about the English, uh, English translations and the more general translations of those books, because they do help. And, and I would like people to go back to that sort of study, but that's only part of. 
I don't particularly advocate a specific point. I, I would say that it's, we are generalists in that, that context, other than focusing it through a Christian aspect. Thank you. Next, could we go to David? Hi, David. Thank you, Amit. Um, fraternal, fraternal greetings uh, from Tbilisi, Georgia. David Cicinazzi here, Frater in the province uh, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, uh, the host of Saperia of the lectures, uh, Saprem uh, Magus. I have two questions. Um, you mentioned learning opportunities being offered through SRIA a webpage. Is it available through current one or the one that will be launched soon, you said? And how do we get the access info? And uh, very technical, but uh, regarding the color of the ribbon uh, that you showed, I have joined the SRIA in February this year. And the color uh, of my uh, badge is uh, green, but you mentioned it should be yellow. So uh, would you help me clarify that part as well, please? Thank you. Thank you, David. Yes, it, to, to, to split the two things, yes, it should be yellow at this stage. Um, the, the, I think the Americans um, do it the other way around, have green first and then yellow. Is that Tony. right, Jeff? No, Tony. I'm, I'm, part, I'm part of uh, in Netherlands. Yes, yes, I know that. But I'm just asking Jeff. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, that's correct, Tony. Yes. Yeah. So I think they've got them the wrong way around, unfortunately. It should be yellow to start with in, in the SRIA and then, then green. And then Thank the you. second part of your question was? Regarding the learning opportunities uh, being offered, is it? Yes, uh, they do. The current web page already? They, they, or? The, the new website, we, we've ha been having a lot of work done on our database and our website. Um, by an Indian company, and they are almost at the point of completing that. We will have a new um, portal access then for all of our members um, by virtue of the, the grades that you are in with a vast number of papers, a vast number of our archive material and books um, and study papers will all come on that and be available to everybody. And you will receive that in the very near future through your college secretaries. They will send you the details of the, the website and how to access it and whatever. I had hoped that it would have been um, completed and, and ready for this evening so that I could announce it to everybody that's on this uh, screen, what it was, because there is a public access to part of it um, which you've probably seen the other one with it, with it, very good um, screens and everything, which was done by our previous Supreme Magus and that wonderful music, the Mysticum Mysterium. It was a fantastic piece of music that went with it. Um, it's, it'll be a similar sort of thing, but it'll have more on for people. And then for our own members, the portal will let you into a, a fantastic array of, of information. That's one of the wonderful things about modern technology and the way we are in the world at the moment, even through this pandemic, is that there's so much information available. There's never been a time in the history of the world that so much information has become available. Think back to the times of 1614 when the farmer came out. Who, who, actually, who actually got copies of that? Who actually got copies? You know, it, it, it's, it's a totally wonderful yeah. idea now. I just follow up question, if I may, Ahmed. Sure, David. Thank you. Uh, uh, through that uh, resource, would uh, old books or libraries available in different, physically available in different colleges, uh, be scanned and made available to members as well? Is that uh, envisaged as well? Some of the books have been scanned and are digitally available. But some uh, of our older and more valuable books at UGLE are not, have not been scanned yet. Although we did have um, a, a part process of, of scanning some of them. And we may well do that uh, in the future. I'll certainly bring that to the General Purposes Committee on Thursday um, to, to further consider that. Because it was on our programme to do to start with through Alistair Lees, our previous Director of General Studies. And I've no doubt that Matt Fletcher, our current um, Director General of Studies would uh, be delighted if we uh, were able to elect electronically um, uh, digitize all of our, our books uh, at UGLE. Thanks so much, Dr. Magus. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, David. Good luck finding that yellow ribbon. <laughs> Connor McQueen. Hello, brother Connor. How are you? 
Good evening. Yes, I'm very well. And uh, thank you so much for the talk. I've been very much looking forward to it as a um, uh, someone that's going to be joining Cryptos College um, when lockdown and pandemic allows. Um, and funnily enough, talk about universal synchronicities. I was on Roso wine. So this is a Roso. <laughs> um, yes. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts, really. Um, as a young member, I see that a lot of young young people like myself are very much into the esoteric um, and even the people under me I, I think are I, I, I would guess somewhat enlightened by birth I know that sounds strange um, but I wonder what the SOIA's kind of plan is for younger members and um, it seems that that category of people especially in Mace for me are very much focused on the esoteric um, and sometimes they don't a, they don't know that it exists, and B, they get scared off by their provincial craft lodge or, or certainly grand lodge. Um, so I was wondering what your, not recruitment tactic is, but what your, um, you know, what, 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 what are you going to do to to get these people in? Because there's certainly the people with the, the questions and the knowledge, I guess, um, you know, with the society. So I just wanted to see your thoughts. I'm hoping that that the the um, developments that we've got going through the Director General of Studies at the moment um, will will lead to a, and and through the website will lead to a, a broadening of um, awareness of our existence as a society and encourage Freemasons who who have, have joined Freemasonry and, and are looking for something further. I, I mean, I joined a long time ago, but. When I joined, I was instantly looking for something. And that's why I ended up joining 20 odd different uh, societies and orders in order to try and find uh, a bit more meaning and understanding to my life and the way, the way that the world operated. And within this society, all of those opportunities are available. And you, yes. you, we, have got that, we have got that in this society. And so this should be um, the home for people who are not knife and fork masons. Um, yes. um, but having said that, if you understand Freemasonry and uh, Ro uh, Holy Royal Arch properly mm -hmm. and, and look in depth at the, the ceremonies and the words and the ritual, you will find a great reward within those if you interpret them properly. Yeah. Uh, um, and too many Masons um, are tied into the problems of, of um, rank and um, different positions within the lodge and doing, doing various other little bits and pieces of social. Um, but don't take time to study and understand the Freemasonry part of it, you know, the, and the rituals that are there. Um, but yeah. I'm trying, we're trying to appeal to younger element, but we rely on Freemasons coming through. Um, and, and unfortunately, Freemasonry is, is um, struggling at the moment, despite the fact they've got uh, the Solomon uh, and the Pathway initiatives um, to try and bring in more people and, and also in, encourage more learning amongst people. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. And just, just to quickly follow up, um, I know that in the Southwest, all of the young, um, you know, the young Masons that come in, as soon as I start bleating on about SOIA and um, the, 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 I guess their core values, like this is exactly what I want. Um, so I, I'll do my bit in the southwest <laughs> for you. But um, it, it's definitely something that um, I don't want to say needs work. But I guess um, you know that that um, the, the word needs to put put across to these young members, or else they'll probably just disappear. And uh... Christian Rosenkreutz uh, had had I think about seven followers initially, and yeah. two of them. Uh, were, were reputed, deputed to stay with him and look after him and, and the Domus Spiritus Sanctus, the whole home of, of um, the society. And the other five travelled round the world, and but they came back and met once a year and brought back with them all the ideas and information that they learned during their sojourns. And what I'm trying to do is get our chief adepts to, to encourage each of the members in their provinces to... Seek, seek words from their junior members and seek words from their fratres 
what can we do? What, what, what do you want? What can we assist in order that we can change the society to the benefit of, of new members and, and members themselves? So that's, that's an ongoing um, issue which I'm, I'm following through. Thank you, Connor. Very, very much looking forward to joining. See you soon. Super. Thank you. Next, could we go to Eric Brown? Hi, Eric. Hi. Um, as the um, Recorder General of SRIA, I'll just uh, break ranks here and correct the Supreme Magus uh, and confirm what's this been is going what you're on. Here, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> confirm what's in the chat. Our first order uh, <clears throat> ribbon is green, second order is yellow, and third order is uh, crimson. Um, one thing that Tony didn't mention is the fact that when a candidate goes through each grade, they get a certificate. Uh, unlike in the craft where you get a Master Mason certificate, you get a Zolatal certificate when you've uh, joined the order. When you uh, go through your second, third and fourth, you get second, third and fourth grade certificates. You will even get a certificate uh, when you are installed as celebrant of your college. And uh, basically, that's part of my job. I have to send out a certificate to each and every one of the members. So it's green, yellow, and then crimson. That just shows my um, technic technical inability in that I think I got them the wrong way around when I was doing the screens. And uh, that's why. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. David, you'd be pleased to know you've got the correct ribbon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I've, got the, I've got the sack now. <laughs> next, could we go to Satyrus, please? Hi, Satyrus. Have you got sound? Yeah, yeah. I think I think I'm good. Hi, brother Tony. Uh, thank you for the great talk. Uh, as SRIA has been for a while one of the orders I'm very much keen to keen and joining at some point uh, if, um, I, I got a couple of questions first of all in Freemasonry generally we all know it to be a peculiar system of morality built in allegory and illustrated by symbols however in SRIA are there any um, I th are there any more uh, tangible uh, practices, esoteric practices, so to speak, as in uh, Qigong, Negong. I think that Freemasonry as a whole does have the whole mantra mudra mindset. And I'm sorry for getting so esoteric, but this is an SRIA talk. And I, I was just wondering whether we can find something similar, something that could be interpreted that way, that could leave a different uh, mark on us in SRIA. That's my first question. And uh, my second question, just to conclude, is in, in Greece, we have a lot of brethren that are madly interested in joining SRIA. I've even discussed it with one of your uh, adepts, who's a very, very close friend of mine. Uh, and we've talked about the possibility. W would you consider opening a grand college uh, or, or a district college in, in uh, Athens, Greece? Uh, these are my two questions, and I'm sorry uh, if I said it a bit, you know, too enthusiastic. <laughs> no, uh, to answer your second question first, I understand that our sister organisation, the Societas Rosicruciana in Scotia, the Scottish, uh, are looking at Greece at the moment, and have had some approaches from there, and, and so it may well be that something happens, um, but because of the COVID, everything seems to have been... Um, put on hold a little bit but um, there's certainly some movement going with regard to Greece through the SRIS. That's uh, a bit of a problem however for uh, the Grand Lodge of Greece because the National Grand Lodge of Greece is uh, is uh, recognized by Scotland GLOS but the Grand Lodge of Greece is recognized by the UGLE so I'm pretty sure that the SRIS would be open only to uh, National Grand Lodge of Greece members not Grand Lodge of Greece members. We're both regular, and at some point, I hope we find we patch things up in the, in the <laughs> night. Uh, but uh, that's why I'm asking about SRIA in particular. And I've discussed this with uh, with a good friend. I can tell you uh, on chat who I discussed it with, and he told me that there would be interest in this. 
Mm. But yeah, SRA, SRS would not work for uh, Greece for the English constitution, uh, to put it that way. Right. Uh, and on the second point about a particular focus, um, um, we don't we don't have a, a particular focus within within uh, the SRIA, but uh, I, I am not esoteric enough, uh, unfortunately. Uh, whilst my uh, subjects range far and wide uh, and for my study, I'm not um, intense in my 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 thoughts. Um, as somebody said, uh, "How do you describe somebody as, as being esoteric? What does it mean?" Um, yeah. The thoughts that go inside my head. Um, are my thoughts um, and be just because I can't remember all the names of the books and the writers and the different phrases from them doesn't mean that that I am not esoteric it means it means that I just can't remember all those names and, and books and phrases um, <laughs> I think Matt Fletcher might still be on is Matt Matt are you on No, I think he's. Um, he's I think he might have gone. John Bridegroom's the second one. He's is is a quite esoteric. Is, is John might um, have a thought on this? But he might have uh, gone as well. Yeah, I think everybody's no, rushing off for tea, um, unfortunately. But I, I, one, Tony. John's on. I uh, um I, I was just kind of typing in the chat for everybody that it, I think specifically in the Rosicrucian organizations that the active um, esoteric practices are the Kabbalah. Um, hermeticism and the Christian mysteries. And I think that those three things um, as a as a first uh, sort of block to look at, um, I mean, there's incredible depth in all of those, and they really do cross over each other in some very fascinating ways. I mean, I think that if you uh, dive into um, a lot of the biblical studies, you will find hermeticism spread out through all of it. Um, but then if you look at hermeticism specifically, what you find is a path <laughs> of practice uh, that teaches uh, mastery of life while on earth. Um, and then of course the Kabbalah works in, you know, people spend a lifetime studying Kabbalah and don't find, uh, you know, the bottom of that, uh, of that well. So I think that, um, you know, when you look at the Rosicrucian practices and they, they talk about um, trying to find the hidden mysteries of nature uh, and science and the uh, um, the commonalities between all religions to find sort of the underlying root truth. Um, you know, those are things that you can really dive into and find a lot of benefit from. And that to me has been what I've found one of the best things to focus on in Rosicrucianism. So if that helps at all. That's <laughs> no, it's helped me. It's helped me. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much, Taurus. Thanks, John. Um, we're going to try and go back to Thaleb. Hi, Thaleb. Are you online and have you got reception is the question. Yes, I am online. Mr. Amit, uh, my question is, uh, I ask uh, for... Uh, Hello? Thaleb, we're losing you again. I'm yeah, yeah. I, my question is uh, for uh, the, the organization or the society of Rosy Christian, they accept all ritual or just uh, uh, like uh, the Royal Arch or Scottish or uh, UV to recognize uh, regular uh, Grand Lodge member of the only regular grand, um, only the, the regular Grand Lodge or just uh, So Tony, I think the question is: Do you need to be a regular? Religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, if if you you want to join the Rosy Christian organization, is not you you be the regular Grand Lodge member of one regular Grand Lodge organized by the Grand Lodge of England or other Grand Lodge uh, or and the ritual is uh, is it's most important for the Rosy Christian. Uh, like uh, some 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 people uh, practice uh, Egyptian ritual, and he, he want to join. And uh, this might my... thanks yeah, for, for for England. It, it would have to be um, you'd have to be member of a lodge, which which um, 
is recognized uh, under a grand lodge or whatever in your particular country that's in a, a lodge recognized by the United Grand Lodge of England. Um, that's the way it stands in, in the SRIA. And in America, I think they, they have um, so many different grand lodges, but again, it's, it's a, a recognition of, of a grand lodge there. <clears throat> Jeff, you might um, be able to assist um, in terms of how it works in America, but certainly in England, it's the United Grand Lodge or any other Grand Lodge which is recognised by United Grand Lodge of England. Uh, yes, that that is that is correct. Um, uh, in the in the in the United States, uh, generally uh, recognised uh, Grand Lodges. Uh, those would be those that are recognized or, or members of the uh, uh, Conference of Grand Masters of North America. Uh, the SRICF, we uh, accept members from uh, Prince Hall uh, Grand Lodges. Uh, so that's, a, that's an issue uh, uh, due to the United States, our unique history and our Prince Hall uh, system. We, we do accept uh, and invite members from the Prince Hall uh, Grand Lodges. Uh, I believe I did see some uh, co-Masons uh, on on the uh, on the meeting. We would not accept uh, members from co-Masonic. Uh, uh, those would be what we would consider to be irregular uh, Grand Lodges here in the United States. Does that uh, does that answer yeah. the question? Yeah, I think Taleb is probably happy with that. Um, probably more alluding to Jeffrey and Tony uh, with regards to, I, mean, I know he mentioned Egypt, which I think is where he's from. Um, is there any connection in Egypt? Yeah, Egypt, uh, the ritual of Memphis Misraim. Some people, if uh, they practice, for example, the Memphis Misraim, if they, you want to be a member of a organization of a Rosy Christian, for example. Thank you, Taleb. Um, I, believe, I believe that Memphis Mizram is um, unfortunately prescribed um, by UGLE in, in England. Um, yes, it's also considered uh, irregular in the, in the United States, yeah. yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Taleb. And, uh, we've got David. David, again, uh, we're going to quickly come to you before we close off for today. Very quick question, uh, Safran Magus. Uh, do we uh, do we have any plans when we might be starting or coming back to normality in Netherlands? I mean, the works of uh, SRI. Any talks about it? <clears throat> we've we've been in discussion ever since uh, we had to cancel our, our May annual meeting at Leamington, um, and then we tried to reorganise it for October, and again we had to cancel that. We've um, got um, a booking for May next year at Leamington. But um, we've been waiting to see what's happened. Unfortunately, this uh, vaccine appears to have come along, and, and with God willing, uh, that might enable us to continue to hold our meeting in May next year. Um, if not, we will certainly have a reduced meeting and a Zoom meeting in the same way that the Americans have uh, just completed in November their, their uh, Zoom annual meeting, which was a wonderful occasion. Uh, it lasted for some eight hours. Um, which an eight hours on a Zoom is, um, is quite quite something to do. Um, hours might not last as long, but <laughs> it will be just as interesting. And hope, we're hoping for, for May next year, there will certainly be something uh, in, in terms of May next year. Thank you, David. Um, brethren, Anthony, Jeffrey, John Bridegroom, thank you ever so much, by the way, for participating, giving us this wonderful talk, promoting the order. It's something that I knew very little about, so it's great to, to learn a lot more um, than I did before this. And thank you very much for your time. Um, brethren, I just want to announce the winners for the mugs. We have Tony Padley and Richard Micklefield who answered the questions, uh, questions correctly. Uh, the answer to the how many temples are there in Mark Mason's Hall? The answer is seven. Um, we are delighted to announce that next week's speaker will be Worshipful Brother Satyrus, who will be conducting one of his most popular talks, brethren, entitled The Three Lesser Lights, The Three Pillars the Lodge Rests Upon. That will be our talk next week, same time, same place. Um, I did mention at the start of the talk to stick around because we've got an exciting announcement to make, brethren. Um, we have our final talk for 2020 on Tuesday, the 22nd of December. And we are so very proud um, 
to announce and delighted to announce that we have conducting his talk for us, our pro grandmaster, most worshipful brother, Raymond J. Smith. He will be closing off for us. It will be our final talk for this year. We're back on the 5th of January after that, but please do put it in your diaries. Once again, we're very, very excited and delighted that we'll be welcoming our pro grandmaster, Raymond J. Smith, on the 22nd. Not to take any shine away from obviously Satyrus is next week. I'm sure he's going to be equally as good and we're all going to enjoy that as well. Uh, um, brethren, there's not much left for me to say, but apart from thank you ever so much for making these talks wonderful. We started this in March. Can't believe we're still sitting here doing these talks. Um, we'd much obviously rather be out physically meeting, but I think we will all uh, agree that we've all learned a hell of a lot over these last few months um, about the various progressive orders and beyond. Uh, and we will be continuing the journey next year as well. So thank you once again. Stay safe. God bless. Keep healthy. Thank you, Amit and Mahi. Thank you very bye. much. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit. Bye, everyone. And thank you, Tony, for a wonderful talk. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 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 Th